Hi, welcome to Tigo Australia. We've had a couple of emails over the last few weeks about what's the best way to set up a redundancy system. Uh, it's fairly inexpensive on your first gas aeroplane, second gas aeroplane, or any gas aeroplane for that matter. Uh, our preferred system has always been two independent batteries, two independent switches, and both through one receiver. Um, you'll get a little bit of conflict from some guys out to say that you can't plug two batteries together through the one receiver. Um, Bunk them, really. Uh, essentially, if you lose a pack and flight, you want the other plug at least to get you home so you don't lose your aeroplane. I've never seen a failure because of this system. And to be honest, it's my preferred system. It's simple, it's pretty straightforward. Now, Mark comes in, I'll show you a little bit about it. We have two inner loops already set up here going through two JR Gull switches. And as you can see, one's plugged into the battery port and the other one's just plugged into any other port. Now, it doesn't have to be another battery port. It can be any port on the receiver and Bob's your uncle. Now, when you turn on each switch, they'll work independently. The thing you need to check occasionally is when you turn one on, you'll get the light on. Turn on the other one, turn the other one off just to make sure that they're both on when they're all fixed to your airplane. But this system uh, worked quite fine. It, um, if you have a switch failure, you're covered. If you have a battery failure, you're covered. If you have a lead failure between the connections here, you're covered. It's a pretty simple, straightforward way to set your airplane up. Now, this isn't just specific to Futaba receivers or uh, JR receivers, but JR receivers you'll see on this RD921, it has a battery two port. So this is already set up to take two batteries going in. Now, one thing you have to keep in mind is you particularly want to keep your batteries both the same. Uh, essentially, they both have to be of the same cell count and primarily the same, same chemistry. So use two NIMS. Uh, at the same time, you know, pretty much you don't want to run a, a, four, a four cell pack and a five cell pack. You you're going to strike problems there. Make sure they're both of the same chemistry, both of the same cell count, and you will increase the capacity and you'll also increase the likelihood of your airplane coming back. Now if you're uh, using a 7 channel uh, receiver or a 6 channel receiver and you don't have enough ports, uh, essentially what you want to do here is get yourself a Y lead. Now you don't plug the, the batteries into the Y lead, you plug your servo with the least amount of current draw, uh, such as your throttle servo. Uh, you can put a Y lead to the, uh, to, the, to the servo, the other end straight into the port, into the servo port and the other end to the other battery. That'll cover you that way. Now when it comes to switches, as I said, we've already got JR Gull switches on these setup. These are a great switch, pretty bulletproof, don't fail. They're a terrific switch. Um, the next step up from that one would be like a D-type switch. This has a charging port already incorporated in it. Uh, that's another great switch. Now another option is this Fromco Wolverine switch. This is a dual switch. This takes care of battery balance and all that sort of considerations. Now, uh, these have got two separate switches, both batteries plug in that and both go to your receiver. Now, on the point of battery balance, you'll get a, a little, a few old wives tales that one will completely drain the other battery, and this isn't so. They're both of the same chemistry, same same size. You can have one almost flat, the other one absolutely full, and you can sit it there for till the cows come home, and it won't charge the other battery. Uh, don't believe that wild wives tale. It's not quite true. Uh, this system will save your airplane if you have an issue, uh, and it's a wise way to go.